my name is Jess Woods and I am an English instructor with Excelsior Classes. One of the most common questions I get from parents who are looking to enroll a student in one of my classes is what to expect as far as composition is concerned. Now I can tell you that that will vary slightly by teacher and it will vary also slightly by which class is chosen as some classes are more foundational level and other classes are going to be looking to really fine tune and hone in on particular skills. I thought I would start today with an essay that was submitted for English 1. English 1 is a full year intro to literary analysis and composition class that delves into several different novels and short stories and poems and we really look at literary devices, we look at things like theme and symbol, we dig deeper than just the words on the page to try to pull some things out, but it is a foundational level class. Now, coming into English 1, students are expected to understand the rules of a basic five-paragraph essay. I do have students who come in who don't really have that foundation. Um, so the first paper, I'm a little bit more lenient on. And I chose to show you today a first paper from this class. Now, the topic was Romeo and Juliet, and there were four or five different topics that the students could choose from. The paper that I'm going to show you today chose to spotlight a particular theme that the student saw within Romeo and Juliet. So let's go ahead and take a look at this essay. This essay is used with permission. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share so you can see this sample. And rather than actually grade it on camera, I thought I would just let you see what we have here. This is um, almost basic MLA format. It's not quite double spaced here, but it does begin with a um, heading at the top and I have omitted the student's name for privacy. There should be some sort of title that doesn't just say Romeo and Juliet essay or essay number one. It does need to be a little bit creative and show some sort of um, thought. So here you'll see that I did give her, the student some credit for a nice title. Five paragraph essays do need to begin with an introduction paragraph. Typically you have a hook sentence, a little bit of build up, and then you end with a three prong thesis. This intro is a little bit um, out of balance or out of order, I suppose I should say, but let's go ahead and read it. Many people hold the belief that Romeo and Juliet is a play based on foolish teenagers, that Shakespeare used their relationship to show how love and hate can be blinding. Across the world, throughout history and classical literature, the strong emotions of love and hate have caused ignorance, impulsivity, and irrational decisions. This theme of love and hate is exemplified in Romeo and Juliet as shown by the hatred of the parents, the spontaneous decisions of Romeo and Juliet, all of which can be compared to the rational thinking of the prince. Because this is a first paper, I did give this student an effective intro comment. But you'll see that I have pulled out some things that I would like for the student to work on. For instance, the highlighted sentence I really think would be a better hook sentence than what she has up here currently. Um, also, texts that are plays or novels, they should be italicized. So you'll see that I've pointed that out. Uh, we cannot just refer to an author as Shakespeare at first. It does need to be William Shakespeare, then Shakespeare afterwards. So you'll see that I just have a few comments there, which you can see on the screen. Not everything that is uh, wrong or out of sorts with an essay is going to be pulled out. I choose to focus in on a couple of things, and after students master that, I kind of have a feel for their writing and what they can do, and then we, we pull out other things to work on. So the idea is that it will scaffold. It will build, and eventually, by the end of the class, their essay ability will be much better as, as well as their ability to analyze and effectively um, articulate a claim and support that claim. So this three-prong thesis tells us that the theme is about love and hate. I would love for the theme here to be a little more clear um, to what the student is getting at, but it's at least present, so I give credit for that. And then there are three points that are kind of pulled out that we're going to see develop this idea of theme. 
Um, hatred of the parents is number one. Spontaneous decision of both of the main characters and comparing that to the rational response of the prince. So that does work here. Let's continue on. First body paragraph should focus in on that first prong of the thesis. So here we have uh, hatred of the parents. That's what this paragraph should be about. The parents of Romeo and Juliet have an ancient grudge against each other. The Capulets and Montagues are undiscerning towards each other and cannot see the reasoning of why they loathe each other. Because they are so blinded by their hate, they cannot see how similar they are. Now, I really do like that point. That's going beyond the text, and it's saying, you know what? They really don't even understand why they don't like each other, and they had a lot of similarities. That's so kind of a foolish uh, vendetta. I suppose that they had against each other. Those are the kind of things we're gonna really try to pull out in English one. Not only were the parents of Romeo and Juliet blinded by hate, the rest of the family was also. Minor characters like Samson and Gregory hated Abraham and Balthazar only because they were part of the Montagues. It's a valid point. A huge group of people were split into two because of which family they supported. When Tybalt and Mercutio were killed in Act One, scene, or, sorry, Act Three, Scene One, both families wanted awful punishments on each other for revenge of their family members' death. I did point out that this paragraph could have benefited from a direct quotation because what this offers is some summary, and it does also offer a little bit of that going beyond that analysis component as well, but I think a direct quotation would be particularly potent in this paragraph. Let's move on. Transitions are something that we really talk about in this class, as it's not something that necessarily comes naturally in writing. Um, it's one of the things that, that we, well, at least that I see as a a big issue, a big stumbling block in the choppy writing that comes in for lower grades. The second point was love, so hate blinded the families, love blinds Romeo and Juliet, that's the second point, so that's what this paragraph should be about. Let's read it. Love blinded Romeo and Juliet. They found themselves in a troublesome situation where they knew their parents would not be accepting of their love. Instead of choosing a rational decision, they did not think it through and continued to bury themselves deeper and deeper into a hole of confusion between themselves and their parents. An example of this is in Act 3, Scene 5. Instead of Juliet calmly explaining to her parents that she could not break her marriage vow, she said she could never come to love Paris. She also said that she was too young to marry, even though she was already married. Another example is when Romeo and Juliet decided to get married the morning after they met. They made an unfortunate decision to get married without telling their parents in Act 2, Scene 6. Notice that I didn't comment on this. I've already made a comment about the way that the student is addressing the acts and the scenes. Um, so I don't always re-comment on those sort of mistakes. The result was that Romeo and Juliet spent much time hiding their relationship from their parents. How can, and you'll see that I have uh, marked out you here because in formal writing we stay away from first person and second person point of view. So this would need to say, how can someone fall in love with another person they just met or he just met or she just met? Romeo made lots, it's a pet peeve of mine, uh, certain words like a lot or big, those are kind of uh, just bland word choices, they're overused, so I will comment on things um, like, hey, let's elevate lots, let's think of a different word choice that we can use here. Romeo made lots of other impulsive decisions with hate also. For example, he killed Tybalt to revenge, or to avenge Marcuccio, even though Tybalt would eventually be killed by the prince as punishment. You'll see that that's a fragment. While this class doesn't teach grammar and punctuation actually in class, and there's no real grammar and punctuation component, um, your student will get some of that experience through these papers, and I will tr try to make sure that they hammer those things out in the future. You'll see that on this paragraph, I also have told the student that paragraphs should end with a solid clincher sentence. A clincher should either circle back to the main point of the paragraph and reference the thesis, or it should transition smoothly into the next point so that that paragraph is tied up neatly and we're ready to move on to the third point. All right, moving on to that last body paragraph. In contrast, Prince Aeschylus did not let his emotions blind him and affect his decisions. 
For example, Act 1, Scene 1, the prince decided to be merciful and just with the Capulets and the Montagues and not give any punishments for fighting in the streets. Also, when Tybalt and Mercutio were killed in Act 3, Scene 1, instead of killing Romeo for killing Tybalt, who killed Mercutio, he only banished him from Verona. That decision was extremely rational and thought through. Okay. This is a great start to this paragraph. I like this idea of contrasting a rational character to all the other characters in this play who don't seem rational at all. So that's actually a really effective approach here. However, the paragraph is not quite developed enough. Um, it's almost there. And so you'll see that I've noted that she really should have at least five sentences towards the end of English one. I'm pushing them to get even more sentences, more like seven or so. But at the beginning, we say that five is the minimum. So I push for that. Um, okay, let's move on to that concluding paragraph here. Overall, and then here she's used um, first person here. Overall, I think that the theme for Romeo and Juliet is that love and hate can be blinding. So we could say instead, Overall, the theme for Romeo, one of the themes for Romeo and Juliet could be that love and hate can be blinding, or we could say it in a different way. Love and hate are powerful emotions that cause people to think irrationally. I mean, there are several ways that this can be worded. Shakespeare shows this clearly through Romeo and Juliet's relationship, the Capulet and Montague's relationship, and in contrast, what it looks like when someone is not blinded by love or hate through the prince. Now, this conclusion is on the right track, but again, it needs a little bit of development, so I've mentioned that here. I haven't really picked it apart too much as far as the fact that she really should begin with a thesis restatement. We haven't talked about summarizing all the main points here. At this point, I feel like there's enough to work on that I can just say, okay, your conclusion does need some development. We talk about these in class a little bit. I show some, some really great examples um, with student permission, of course and then students can kind of get an idea of what I'm looking for. Um, if there are ever any questions, they can set up conferences with me, we can talk through things. But one thing that I noticed from the very first paper that's submitted to the very last paper that's submitted in this class is that there's exponential growth. And I am always very proud of my students. I think that they do a wonderful job. So if your student is not quite to this point yet, um, this is a, a mid-range paper. I chose to show you a paper that this one I believe got, let me look. This one received an 82. So, um, you know, kind of a mid-range paper here. There are certainly papers that are first papers that are worse than this. And there are papers that are better than this. So, um, anyway, we can always talk about things if you're just not really sure where your student falls. At the end of each essay, I'm going to give some feedback in sort of paragraph form. Um, I'm always going to start with something that is positive. I'm going to pull out things that I think the student did well, uh, that are strengths for the paper. And then I'm going to give some constructive criticism, some things I think that the student will need to work through, um, you know, for the next paper. If there are ever questions about that, then the student can come to me. We'll talk about it. Um, there's also a rubric that goes along with this. You can see where points come off. And that rubric is filled out and submitted back to students as well. So most of the time, it's pretty clear what needs to be worked on. Um, there are times where students will ask me, what if my conclusion had looked like this? Would this be an effective conclusion? And I can kind of give them some guidance with that as well. So you can kind of read through this feedback if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to read it for you. But overall, I, I was pleased with this paper as a start to essay writing in this class. This is not what the student's writing looks like currently, and it is not what the student's writing will look like by the end of the class either, as we have just wrapped up that first semester. But definitely a nice start. I hope that this has helped you to get an idea of what we're looking for coming into English 1 as far as composition is concerned. If at any point you have questions, please know that you can email me at jesswoods at excelsiorclasses.com or any of the other English instructors here at Excelsior. Thank you.